For a downhill mountain bike racer, competing in the UCI World Cup Series is the absolute pinnacle of the sport. Riders from all corners of the globe will spend six months of the year on the road in pursuit of that elusive perfect race run that only the very best can win on any one day. There is no margin for error. For the Lafayette Gravity Republic team, they come into the new season off the back of an outstanding year in 2013. With 15 World Cup and World Championship podiums, four overall series medals and a junior World Cup win with the team finishing second overall in the standings. The only thing missing was an elite World Cup race win in the ultra-competitive men's category. In 2014, the pressure is on for the team's two elite riders, Sam Blankensop and Louis Bruni, to finally deliver that elusive first World Cup win. This is their dream. This is a life worth winning. Listen to this rhyming exhibition. I'm certain you ain't seen like an honest politician. This ain't just head hitting. A lot of pinched nerves are next are caused by bars that bless spitting. Wait, don't hate. I just move how I move. I can't describe what it is. I just do what I do. I am better than any rapper from here to wherever. And my legacy will harass my offsprings forever. I flow it right better than any. I'm the hottest. And trust me, that's not being conceited. That's being modest. I'm being honest. Pop up my collar. School of hard knocks. I graduated with honors. <laughs> I just do what I do. You see me? I just do what I do. I just do what I do. With the 2013 Downhill World Cup coming down to the very last race run of the season, 14 was one of the most hotly anticipated in the history of the sport. I feel a little bit different, you know, the relationship with Loic and Blinking. Now it's like, like two brothers, like maybe sometimes we fought a little bit. There were a little competition for everything, you know. For sure this track is cool and last year I went second. The next step is first. It's gonna happen what's gonna happen, yeah. So it's it's already written. Yeah. <laughs> I felt really good all weekend. I had like I had good fun on the bike. The truck was fun to ride like so fast. Even if it wasn't uh, the most technical of the year, it was good fun to ride and to go fast and I won the quality, so that was the first time I, I won anything, you know. And I felt, I really felt, you know, when you're sure about something, I felt that uh, it was going to happen. I was having a good race, you know. I was like, wow, I was having a good feeling on the bike, good moment, you know, of your life. One of the best time, the best riding you can get, you know. I was with uh, Laurent, the coach, and um, we had, I think it was after the second split, it was in green, and um, then I, I was thinking, okay, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, and I said, okay, I will tell to the coach that it's gonna happen, and I said, Laurent, it's gonna happen. Allez, elle est pour nous, celle-là, elle est pour nous. Allez, coach, elle est pour nous, celle-là. Crashing out on the last difficult section of the track whilst green at both splits is a tough lesson for any racer and a devastating blow for everyone connected with the team. For Loic, he approached the last corner already celebrating in his mind and he paid the ultimate price for complacency as he lost both his wheels in the loose dirt and with it, the race win he had always dreamed of. I didn't really realise when I crashed that I just put, take my bike and when I crossed the line and I, I just watched at the the timing and I saw plus seven or plus something, I was like, man, how can you be so close of winning a race, a big race, and just crash? You have to be a You're a When you, you have the opportunity to win a race, like a World Cup, uh, you don't have hundreds opportunity like this. That's the only thing I I really regret a little bit. But I can't do anything, you know, I crashed. It's it's how it was supposed to be. Oh, 
Australian, representing Australia. Oh, well, nice. You got time, you were going. In second place. You got time, you were going fucking fast. Yeah, yeah, bro. Representing yeah, Republic of South Africa. Good man. Good man. Good man. Good man. Good man. You held it together yesterday. But you have to push hard on this track. So if you, where you crash, Greg almost crashed. Uh, Connor and Fear. Connor and Fear. There's quite a few people because they're just pushing that. This track was so tight, it made everybody push too much. You are. Right. It's good that you feel this way though, because that just makes you more passionate for next time. As the dust settled and the realization of what had just happened started to sink in, Rooney would need to draw on all of his mental strength to put this disappointment behind him. Champions and legends of the past have all experienced moments like this in their careers, and the ability to bounce back and learn from mistakes is the mark of a true competitor. Like I told you, it was written and I didn't ask to win here. I didn't, so... Is the win gonna come this year? Yeah, I'm touching it, but I didn't grab it, so... I want to win one, so... I knew I could do it today. If I was close today, I can be close again, you know? That's what I try to say in my head, to be stronger. So, yeah, maybe one day, soon. <laughs> You know, it's it's life, it's racing. So it's uh, sometimes it, it's not happening how you calculate it. So you can't be where you have to be so every time. I I was close. I could reach the, the, my first win, you know, fucking uh, first win. But I didn't, and yeah. It was hard. Bah, bien sûr, Louis qui était très déçu et nous aussi, hein, parce qu'on le voyait vraiment euh, vite, on le voyait capable du meilleur, etc. Et voilà, après, ce qu'il y a, c'est qu'il faut relativiser les choses. Hein, ça reste du sport, c'est rien de grave. Euh, Louis qui est très fort pour relativiser les choses aussi. Après, ça n'empêche pas qu'on qu remette les choses en question, qu'on voit ce qui, a, ce qui a été fait bien ou pas bien, les hauts, les bas, etc. Donc, il faut tout remettre en question. Après, voilà, il faut, faut relativiser les choses un maximum et, et c'est ça qui permet de rebondir le mieux possible. Nice, France. And for Loic Bruni and his fitness coach, Laurent Solier, this is the setting for Bruni's intense training program. When you train and you don't want to go, or you are you are blowing up, you know. Uh, you just think about the fact that all the other ones are doing the same, even harder and many more time in the weeks. So you just want to put more intensity and train more, you know. How do you think G or Greg win races? They fucking spend hours every day. Comme tout sport de haut niveau, on a le droit de rien laisser au hasard. Donc euh, oui, il faut être performant dans, dans tous les domaines, hein, quoi qu'il en soit. Ça laisse pas, ça laisse pas place à, à des gros points faibles en tout cas. Donc euh, oui, il faut être bon partout, que ce soit sur le mental que sur le, comme sur le physique. Alors euh, Loïc va faire son test d'effort pour, euh, pour voir un petit peu son état de forme actuel. Le protocole, on va faire deux sprints. Ensuite, on va faire un test Wingate qui est un sprint sur 30 secondes. Et après le test PMA pour un petit peu euh, ses capacités d'endurance. We all know that there's obviously a certain amount of strength that that is required, but you need to have a balance in your body and you find a way where your human body is performing at its best power output. Every once in a while you get the athlete, I think, you know, you get the Ricky Carmichaels of motocross. The guys who've got the talent, who've got the work ethic, but the journey truly is uh, more important than, than the destination. And I know we've all heard that, but there's when the magic begins, I think, with an athlete. If you have gone over everything with a fine tooth comb and you know it's all dialed, then you get to settle that, it makes it a lot easier mentally to perform, you know? You're ready, you're, you're, you're really fit, you're working the track, but if mentally you're weak, you're not going to ride good. 
Preparation is the key for every rider. And for Sam Blenkinsop and his trainer Todd Shumlik, coming into every race with all boxes ticked is a big priority. I've been working with Todd for three years now. The main thing, like ever since I started with him, it was just like I needed more power on the bike. That power has to be harnessed mentally. That power has to be harnessed, obviously physically, but even, even breathing and, and respiratory. Anyone in the top 10 can win on that day. Even top 15 riders can win a World Cup. Everyone's working on small details. I think everyone's so close. Like You can be in the top 10 and you only be, what, a second off the podium. So it's, it's, it's crazy now. The UCI World Cup is a global series and teams travel to many different countries in pursuit of the perfect race. For Kiwi rider Sam Blenkinsop, Monson and Canada is an old favourite and a track he knows he can perform well at. They've done a few changes on the course and yeah, they're good. I like it. It's cool that they do that every year. Kind of makes it uh, interesting, you know, it's not every year we come, it's kind of the same track but they change little things and open up lines and it makes it uh, more difficult. We passed now the, the middle of the season, it's the fifth round of the World Cup. Then uh, we have two really important round, round uh, here in uh, North America. If I have a smooth run I can be on the podium for sure. Uh, it's one of my favourite tricks. Now as a veteran of the sport and approaching the end of his fifth season with a Lapierre team, Blenkinsop is keen to deliver on a course which has always promised so much. A long high speed course with roots, rocks and massive jumps, Monson Anne is tailor made for a rider like Sam. But with his best ever result here being sixth place in 2008, he has never been able to consolidate his good speed in practice with a podium finish. In 2013, Sam had qualified in third position only for a late rainstorm to severely damage his chances in the race. In 2014, he has qualified in eighth and is keen to make amends for last year's disappointment. It's race day and um, yeah, I feel good. Had a okay qualifying yesterday, so I'm pretty close to everyone. Like all of us are on the, was that five of us in the same second, so go, um, go all out for the finals and have some fun. With his confidence high after a good week on the bike, Sam could feel that this was the time it was finally going to come together for him in St Anne. With teammate Loic Bruni already at the finish and looking set for a top 10 result, the pressure was on to beat him and step back onto a World Cup podium for the first time since Norway in 2013. Putting together a great run and knocking reigning world champion South African Greg Minard off the hot seat by over half a second, Blenkinsop was eventually able to confirm a fifth place podium finish to end the successful week. Yeah, it was pretty good. I, I've been feeling good all weekend and I had a pretty clean run and yeah, I'm, I'm happy I'm on the box. So. Yeah, it's good. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's fifth. It's, it's good, but not like that exciting, but it, yeah, it's good to be on the podium. I'm happy. Yeah, it's what I aim for every week and it's a different winner. I, I like it. Not the same. Same dude winning every weekend, it's like Sam, Troy, and then, yeah, there's been a different winner yeah, all, all this year, so it's cool. So hopefully it's uh, either me and Loic next week, so, yeah. For Sam, Monson Anne marked a turning point in the year, as together with team manager Laurent, the decision was reached that Sam would be leaving the team at the end of the season. When I started working in the sport industry, maybe 13 years ago to now, one of my best choice was to include uh, Sam in the, in the team and to share some good time with him. He came with, uh, with his passion, he came with, uh, with his good spirit, and he's got like uh, the, the Kiwi flair, you know. I'm going to miss Blanky a lot. Since I'm, I began World Cup, he always been there, all, always. Never missed a race, I never missed a race too. And uh, I don't know, he's like, uh, when he's here, I'm, I'm happy, you know? I, when I see his face, I'm like, I feel better straight away. Yeah, those are the good memories, like sharing the podium together with all the team and just hanging out of the week and just riding, having fun and just doing everything I love. And, and LAP here kind of made that happen, still make it fun, you know? After a week in Canada, the team moved on to Wyndham in the state of New York, USA for the penultimate World Cup race. A track notorious for providing insanely close times due to its short length and relative technical ease, recording a second podium in a row for Sam was going to mean a near perfect run down the mountain on race day. 
After a qualifying run riddled with mistakes, Sam knew that he needed to turn it around before his final run of the weekend. I think a lot of people had big mistakes trying to push too hard and it's still close but yeah I thought it'd be closer for this kind of track because there's nothing really in it. It's just that kind of track if you get the flow and then you're in the motion and then you've done a real clean run. So I think if I just ride kind of smooth tomorrow and don't make any big mistakes like I did today and just, but I still want to ride out of control a little bit. Race day. And alongside his trainer Todd Schumlich, Sam is going through the final stages of preparation before his race run. Todd helps Sam with a procedure known as PNF, a series of stretches designed to maximise an athlete's physical performance on the bike. It's a type of way of getting the muscle to fire, trigger the muscle, create mobility. And that mobility usually allows for uh, more you know, range of motion or freedom, and create just muscle recruitment. So they're firing a little bit more blood flow. Some of the stuff just helps mentally, just to know that you're getting a chance to do everything you can do. Don't go fast, don't go fast. Have an exciting run. Yeah. When you've had exciting runs, you've had your best runs. Go have an exciting run. Yeah. Alright? After a near flawless run and within sight of the finish line, Sam pulls off a daring inside line on one of the final jumps and crosses the line into the hot seat with the final result of fourth place, consolidating his place on the podium for the second time in a row. It's good to be on the podium. What I know of, it's uh, my first time I've done it. Two podiums uh, back to back, so it's uh, pretty good. Good feeling and uh, just, I think we need to keep it going. That's the, the only hard part, just to, every weekend trying to kind of be consistent. Another one? Yeah. Hopefully good. in France we can do better, no? Pretty good, huh? Yeah, just the top was a bit uh, easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I knew I'd be if I push, I crash. Unfortunately for teammate Louis Bruni, a flat front tire would end his chances of a good result, leaving him in a negative mindset so close before the last race of the season in his home country of France. For Sam, this was an opportunity to lend his support to his close friend and rival in the hope that he could bounce back yet again at the end of what had been a difficult season. Don't worry about it, man. You're still fucking young. You're gonna smoke these camp one day. Okay, bro? I don't know, I feel like I've got a bit of, I don't know, just a bit of momentum. I'm just kind of thinking a bit more straight and got my coach helping me a bit more. Happy how the season's gone. Had some ups and downs, like, I feel like Fort William, I could have, yeah, would have been on the podium there, so, yeah. But that's racing, you know? Same as the week today, flat tire, you can't really do anything about that kind of rubbish. Blanky is definitely my first choice for the for, for my heart and also there is something special with with him then I can't be more proud of him and uh, more proud to, to work uh, for five years with him and uh, the podium is just the result of hard hard work and uh, the intensity of his work you know next couple of days we have uh, three days off in uh, the Big Apple in New York and after we go back in France waiting for the, the World Cup in Meribel. Then uh, it's kind of a straight line to the, to the end of the season and we have to keep the pressure. I know I, I am already uh, like a big brother to Loris, but I will try to stay, to stay someone like this for him because uh, I know him actually since we are four. I hope nothing is going to change. The final race of the season had arrived. And for the Lapierre team, this was more than just a last chance to prove their worth in front of the French crowd. Riding uh, in front of your family, your friends, and I said, OK, just enjoy. It's one of the last day of the season, so I hope, uh, I hope I will have a good run. Allez, Lolo! As Loic fires his way into the finish arena, the suspense is unbearable. 30 seconds seems like a lifetime as he traverses his way across the grassy piste in the pursuit of a life-changing result in front of a huge French crowd.